Hi everyone, back here again for another video. iPad OS 14 is coming soon and I'm really excited for it to come and I've been waiting for it. Especially the iOS 14 as I know it can make my iPhone look and function better, I think. But anyway, I cannot wait much longer so I decided to install the beta version of the iPad OS 14 on my iPad Air 3. So let's see if it's worth all the hype. Is the iPad OS 14 really interesting? Let's see what we're expecting to have in a few weeks when the public version is released. So first off, make sure to back up all your data of your iPad before you download the beta version if you want to. I did mine through the iTunes I have from my work laptop. And gladly I didn't have any issues when I downloaded the beta version. So simply follow the steps that are indicated in the website uh, where you will need to install and download the profile. I already have mine installed, so here I'll just click on ignore. When I go into my general settings in profile, I'll see that the beta is downloaded. So I now just simply download and install. I got the beta 7 version when I downloaded it on Monday, but today I received the beta 8 version. Now let's see first the most talked about new feature of iPadOS 14, which is the redesign widgets. For me personally, I wish the app library that is in iOS 14 is also here in the iPad, but it's not. The widget still looks buggy sometimes, and if you see here, some widgets become invisible, but when you scroll down, then it will all of a sudden show up. I recommend scrolling on the left side of the widgets, because again, it seems there are bugs to be fixed as this happens. If you scroll on the right, sometimes it doesn't work. If you scroll on the widgets and you touch a stack, then it'll be the stack that will move. Or if you scroll down sometimes then it triggers the spotlight search now to customize the widgets i can simply tap and hold on the screen to go to wiggle mode all the widgets i see here are apple apps and there are no third-party widgets yet maybe we'll see those in the public release however when i go to the last stack of the widgets where i see customize this is where I think I can only add the third-party widgets like Chrome or Google or like Kindle. One thing I also noticed is that in Stacks, I can delete widgets, uh, but I cannot add any. I have to go and click on the plus sign to add the widgets. And I have to make sure to pick the right size so it will stack correctly otherwise it will move around some of the other stacks that are already in place lastly on widgets is about the shortcuts i like using my shortcuts and in ios 13 i can see all my shortcuts and i can customize it from the widget 2 but not in ipad os 14. when i tap on it it gives me the option for all shortcuts or starter shortcuts in this starter shortcuts are not really what I need it's kind of useless to me also I cannot see all my shortcuts from the widgets I have to manually go into the shortcuts app to see all of it and also to rearrange the apps so that I can see the four apps, the first four apps that I want to use. Now let's see the other redesign, which is on the apps sidebars. I mainly see it in the photos app. I can see the photos and videos, and also I can navigate in my folders. It can also be hidden by tapping the icon on the top left. Same goes with the files folder. It almost has the similar style of sidebar. And what I think is new is, as I don't have this on iOS 13, is that I can add Google Drive. The spotlight search also has a new look. 
It's now a compact window like a pop-up and won't cover the whole screen. They also did this for phone calls and uh, FaceTime. Scribble is also now a feature and it works not only on Spotlight Search, but on any search and text bars. This is one of the new features I'm really excited about. The Notes app had a bit of change in the menus too. And one thing that stands out for me is that when I change to light background, the font color also changes, something that was not available in iOS 13. But Scribble made Notes a bit more interesting as you can see here. Scribble is activated by tapping on the pen with the letter A. Then you can scribble and it will automatically convert it to text or erase the text when you scratch on the word. The recognition is quite good as most of the tests I did, the Notes app understood my bad handwriting. Still in the Notes app, you can highlight your handwriting and you can copy and paste it as text as you see here. Scribble also kind of works in good notes. When I tested it, I don't know what I was doing wrong. It's hit or miss, mostly miss. But after a few tries, it finally worked. Maybe it's a bug on the iPad OS 14 or it's really just my bad handwriting. I'll observe and see whether this will be fixed in the next releases. The other new options in Notes is that you can also encircle the text and it will copy the text. Another one is the shape recognition that when you draw any shape and you do a pause at the end, then it will convert it to the exact shape. Just make sure that you pause without a space, otherwise it won't work. Siri also has a new look. It's now a compact design and they say it's smarter. What's the weather in Bangkok? Hey Siri. What's the weather in Antarctica? There's no weather information. Sorry about that. Now on the change in Safari, I was really looking forward to this new change where there's uh, now an ability to translate the page from a different language. Unfortunately, it says here at the end note that it's only available in the US and Canada and only supports seven different languages. So too bad it won't be able to translate Thai where I am mostly using. Last but not the least, and one that I'm really excited to use, is the change in voice memo. Now in iPadOS 14, with just a single tap on this, on what looks like an autofix icon, will enhance the audio recording and will reduce the background noise. Something pretty cool on a free app that you get on hand in the iPad. There are other enhancements like AR, iMessages, Home, and Maps that I don't really use that much, so I won't talk about it anymore. So I hope this video gave you a quick look of what's coming up on iPadOS 14, and it gave you some tips on how it will look like and how it can be used. So that's it. Thanks for watching.